Hi everyone! Tonight's video is on terrestrial biomes. So what is a biome? A biome is a large geographic area encompassing many ecosystems. So terrestrial biomes are defined by abiotic factors. Who remembers what the term abiotic means? Abiotic means non-living. And there are two abiotic factors that determine terrestrial biomes. One is temperature, and the next is the amount of rainfall. So abiotic biomes are determined by their temperature and their amount of rainfall. So what are some terrestrial biomes? Well, here we can see a map of the globe with many different biomes indicated in different colors. You can see up near the top of the globe is the tundra. The grassland is indicated by the kind of pea green shade in the middle of the United States. Desert is indicated by that pale yellow that you see at the top of Africa. That's the Sahara Desert. And then tropical rainforest, which is another terrestrial biome, is indicated with a kind of a Kelly green, and that's at the top of South America. That's the Amazon rainforest. So if the two things that determine what biome a terrestrial biome is, is temperature and the amount of rainfall, what is it that determines the temperature of the biome? Well, it all starts with your position on Earth. So sunlight hits the Earth unevenly because of the curvature at the Earth. At the equator that's indicated with the green line, sunlight hits very directly and very intensely. So the most sun and the most energy hits at the equator. But due to the curvature of the Earth, the same amount of light that hits directly at the equator is spread out over a much larger area at either the north and south poles of the Earth. So that energy and light is diffused. Because the sun hits the Earth unevenly due to the curvature of the planet, it heats the planet unevenly too. If we look at the annual mean temperature of the Earth, you can see towards the middle of the Earth near the equator, it's very hot most of the year, whereas the further you get from the equator, the cooler the annual mean temperature is. And this all has to do with the curvature of the Earth and how the energy from the sun hits the Earth. What about local geography? How does it impact temperature? Does it all have to do with your position on Earth? No, the proximity, your proximity to the ocean plays a huge role in the temperature. If we look at this drawing of an area of the Earth near the ocean, through the seashore, up over a coastal range, and then far inland, you can notice a couple of things. First of all, the daytime temperatures near the ocean tend to be somewhat temperate. They're fairly cool, maybe an average temperature of about 60 degrees Fahrenheit. As you move slightly inland, the temperature might be about 70 degrees Fahrenheit, a little warmer. And as you go inland further and further, the warmer the temperature gets. In fact, if you go inland of a coastal range of hills or mountains, the temperature can often be in the 100s. The second thing you'll see about temperature and proximity to the ocean is the range of temperatures between day and night is very low when you're right near the ocean, maybe 60 degrees Fahrenheit during the day and 55 degrees Fahrenheit at night, which is not a big range. When you go inland, however, inland of the coastal range, that high daytime temperature of 105 degrees Fahrenheit can be very low at nighttime, maybe 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Altitude also plays a huge role in temperature. So you can see when you're at more closer to just above sea level, maybe a thousand feet, the daytime temperature might be 77 degrees Fahrenheit. But as you go up to 900 feet, the daytime temperature might be 45 degrees Fahrenheit. At 19,000 feet, which is a very high altitude, the daytime temperature might be nine degrees Fahrenheit. So the higher you go in altitude, the lower the temperature. Another abiotic factor that determines your biome is the amount of rainfall. So what determines the amount of rainfall? Well, again, we have to go back to our position on Earth. So at the equator, as I said earlier, we see very high temperatures because the sun is hitting directly at the equator and that energy is coming in a very direct line. That sun heats the air, which is very moist at the equator, and that air rises. As the air rises, it gets cooler. As we said, altitude affects temperature. And so that air condenses into clouds. 
Again, once that air condenses even more, it will fall back down to Earth in the form of precipitation. It's very different if we look 30 degrees north and south of the equator. If we look at this picture, the green line indicates the equator. The red line is 30 degrees north of the equator, and this red line is 30 degrees south of the equator. As we said at the equator, the sun hits very intently, causing the moisture to rise from the moist air until it condenses into clouds and falls back down in precipitation. But at least this leaves the air devoid of any moisture, and as it gets to 30 degrees above and below the equator, it's very, very dry. And sure enough, if we look at about 30 degrees above the equator, we see the Sahara Desert. What about local geography? Does it affect local rainfall or is it all about position on Earth? Well, sure enough, proximity to the ocean and location relative to mountain ranges and altitude all play a role in the amount of rainfall. So let's look at the air above the ocean. This is again to be very moist because of evaporation from moisture from the ocean. That means this air is very moist. As it moves inland and comes up against a coastal range, that air is going to go up, and as we go up in altitude, the temperature goes down. That means that the moisture that originally came from evaporating from the ocean is now going to condense into clouds and fall down in terms of precipitation. So what we see is right next to the ocean has high levels of precipitation. But as that air makes its way over the coastal range and into an inland valley, all of the moisture has left that air, and we have dry air, and it forms what we call a rain shadow, which is interior of the coastal range of mountains from the ocean. So in summary, a combination of local geography and position on Earth determine both the temperature and precipitation levels in a terrestrial biome. And that temperature and precipitation level determine what biome it is. This leads us to our next topic, because different biomes have different organisms that are adapted to that level of rainfall and temperature, and those different organisms have very different ways of interacting with each other. So that's all for tonight. 